Thanks, Jay, and thanks as well to our judges, our startups, and to Velocity. We're joined now by Ontario Health Minister Christine Elliott. Following some opening remarks, Minister Elliott will share her perspective on the government's role as an innovation partner in promoting new technologies and advancing the future of Ontario's health care system. She'll be joined by Lily Liu, Dean of the University of Waterloo's Faculty of Applied Health Sciences. Lily is an investigator with AgeWell Network of Centers of Excellence, an initiative looking to accelerate the delivery of technology-based solutions in Canada. She's an occupational therapist looking for ways technology can help older adults and family caregivers. Her current focus is on user adoption of technologies for rehabilitation assessments and interventions. Christine Elliott currently serves as Ontario's Deputy Premier and Minister of Health and is the MPP for Newmarket Aurora. After graduating from the University of Western Ontario with a Bachelor of Laws degree, Christine built a successful career in business and law, working first as an auditor at one of Canada's largest banks. Christine later co-founded a law firm with her late husband, Jim Flaherty, where she specialized in real estate, corporate, and estate law. Christine also used her business and legal expertise to provide pro bono legal work for charitable organizations, gaining her the esteemed recognition of Rotary International Paul Harris Fellow. Christine is also a co-founder of the Abilities Centre in Whitby, a leading community hub. The facility was built with the vision of celebrating all people, regardless of ability. In 2016, Christine became Ontario's patient ombudsman, where she fought for better access to health care for all. Please join me in first welcoming Minister Elliott and Lily Liu to the summit. Good afternoon, everyone. It really is a pleasure to join you today, even though the weather wasn't particularly helpful in terms of getting here, but it's wonderful to be in a room full of health innovators and to hear about some of the work that was being done, and congratulations to all the young entrepreneurs for all of your great work that was presented here this afternoon. So I have to say I really do appreciate opportunities such as this that allow me to uh, discuss and share ideas about our healthcare system and what both you and we envision for the future. One of the most pressing challenges, of course, as you know, facing our healthcare system right now is our growing and rapidly aging population. But where there is a challenge, of course, you know there's also an opportunity. An opportunity for innovation. Our government made a commitment to the people of Ontario that we would end hallway health care. We remain fully committed to delivering on that promise. We are making the changes necessary to build a modern, integrated, and fully sustainable system that will improve access to patient-centered care. Achieving our goal, of course, demands that we embrace innovation. Health innovation contributes to better access to care, greater productivity, reduced health care costs, and better health outcomes, as all of you know. If we are to achieve our government's goal of ending hallway health care, then we are going to need to adopt a 21st century approach to care, one where clients, patients have access to secure digital tools, including digital online health records, and online appointment booking with healthcare professionals. We need a healthcare system that smoothly and safely adopts new ideas and tools to improve our care for patients. To that end, our government is taking important steps to unlock the limitless potential of new technologies. We are supporting made in Ontario health innovation companies, first of all, by keeping our promise to reduce red tape bringing innovative health technologies into the healthcare system faster. And we are also in the final stages of developing a digital strategy for healthcare in Ontario. We recognize that innovation has the potential to transform every sector in government, including, and I think perhaps especially healthcare. We want to identify solutions that empower healthcare to be an economic contributor not a drain on our resources. 
for healthcare to be seen not simply as a user of tax dollars, but as a job creator. We can see the potential that already exists for this to happen on Ontario. The facts are that Ontario ranks fourth in North America med tech employment behind only California, Florida, and Texas. And, of course, our life sciences sector generated nearly $50 billion in revenue in 2015. So the potential is, of course, there. That much is very clear. But we need to nurture it to help it grow, to take away unnecessary restrictions, and to help our Ontario health innovators to scale up and be able to commercialize your work. That's what is important today. We want you to continue to do it here, here in Waterloo Region, but certainly here in Ontario, that's for sure. And that is one of the things that brings me here today, an opportunity to speak with you, the leaders on the front line of healthcare innovation, so that we can share information, so that I can learn about more about what you need in order to be successful and to stay here in Ontario, and so that I can share with you our government's vision for healthcare innovation to ensure that you're better prepared and have the necessary information you need for the coming opportunities. As a government, we're looking to working with you to foster the innovation and collaboration that leads to higher quality patient care. With your help, we will build a 21st century healthcare system that unlocks the limitless potential of Ontario's healthcare innovators and brings excellent health quality care and education to everyone in Ontario, regardless of what part of the province you live in. So thank you very much, and I look forward to our discussion. Minister Elliott, welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you. And uh, in the midst of all of this talent and knowledge, I yes. feel uh, very overwhelmed. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm a lawyer. I'm not a Medicare <laughs> expert, but I, it's wonderful to hear about all the great work that you're all doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I must say, we started the day with bright sunshine coming in, and I did specifically order the storm in order to create a fireside chat ambiance for us. Okay, well it worked, so it worked, this is okay, great. Okay, great. Well, I'm gonna begin by um, your introduction. Thank you so much for that. You talked briefly about the government's new digital strategy. Why is it important for the government to move forward with this strategy at this time? And what are you hoping the strategy achieves for patients and uh, service providers in Ontario? Well, right now, of course, we, uh, my job, my role is to make sure that um, patients in Ontario have excellent quality health care. And that means we need to move it into the 21st century. And the technology and the work that you're doing is going to be really essential for that to happen. And I would say particularly now, because we are embarked on this transformation of health care to make sure that people can get health care in their local health areas, um, delivered by teams that plan and manage the local health care. So it's really important that we have the technology, making sure that we protect um, patients' rights to protect their personal health information, but to make sure that healthcare providers can connect with each other to provide that quality of care, that 360 degree view of a patient to make sure they don't have to repeat their history, to make sure that they don't get um, prescriptions that are toxic one with the other, to make sure that they can receive that connected, integrated care that people have told me uh, time and time again about it since I became health minister a year or so ago. Yeah. And uh, speaking about uh, personal health information, uh, we all can identify with the fact that data plays an increasingly important role in our societies. And of course, we're going to uh, expect that this is uh, going to be, it is playing an increasingly important role in our health care. So um, can you tell us how the government of Ontario plans to manage and protect the privacy of patients as more of their data is being collected in the health care system? Well, I know it is really important both in terms of individual patient care, but also um, allowing health innovators to have access to that big data, the uh, de-identified information that will help you to be able to plan, to look towards the future, to see what the needs are and be able to plan and deal with those needs. 
those things are all um, important for us to make sure that we have a, a 21st century integrated healthcare system. Mm -hmm. But we need to do a lot of work in making sure that we work with the Information and Privacy Commissioner, of course. We will need to bring some amendments forward to the Personal Health Information Protection Act uh, to make sure that it reflects current needs and current practices. We want to make sure that people have control of their own personal health information, that they can have access to their own records, that they can create um, online appointments and so on, uh, that they can have access to the data, but that it only is being used in a personalized way by healthcare professionals that are involved in their care. We want to make sure that we can can provide all of you with the information that you need in a, a de-identified way. Uh, but that the patients can also have access to their own data and healthcare professionals can have it to make sure they get the best care possible. Thank you for that. Um, I think it aligns very well with a lot of the conversations that's been uh, occurring today. And uh, certainly there's lots of expertise here uh, in this region to work with um, the, the government on those issues. Um, so t today, a lot of the discussion also focused on innovation in the healthcare space. And a lot of this innovation is being done by industry and also in the private sector. What opportunities do you see for innovation to play in healthcare? Um, and what role does Waterloo Region and the Ontario tech sectors have to play in this space? Well, I think I would start with Waterloo Region. I think it's, you're already known as innovators in so many other areas in Ontario that I think that there's a key role to be played by Waterloo Region as we look forward to the future and, and what changes we need to make in healthcare and how we bring our healthcare system into the, I keep saying the 21st century, but the fact that we still rely on faxes in healthcare, I think tells you a lot. We want, that's one of my goals is to get rid of faxes in healthcare. I don't think we should need them anymore with other ways of uh, other technologies that are available and ways that um, we communicate with each other. I think that's really key. One of the things that we're also doing in government is you're looking forward to collaborate, and I've heard about some of the great programs that you've been working on and some of the great conversations you've had today. Uh, one of the things we're trying to do in government is to make sure that we don't just look at healthcare and innovation from only the Ministry of Health. Of course, it's not that. It involves finance, it involves economic development. I think that's surprising to many people when I start talking about healthcare as not just being a user of tax dollars, but as a significant job creator. I think we have tremendous potential here in Ontario to, uh, to create jobs and provide excellent quality healthcare to the people of Ontario. So we're trying to do our part by working across ministerial lines to make sure that we can get the entire picture right. I know there are still some problems with commercialization and scaling up and being able to um, both, first of all, market your products in Ontario and, and sell to the Ontario government, and, and we've got to break out of some of the old molds that we've been in, but also in terms of scaling up and being able to um, achieve that value and create those jobs that you want to create and make sure that your technologies and products are going to be available to everyone across the province because inclusion and accessibility are, are really, really important to us. It shouldn't matter if you live in Waterloo Region or if you live in Sioux Lookout or Cornwall or wherever you live, you should be able to have access to the same excellent quality health care. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, so along that line of, um, of access and also of um, the, the marketing, um, and, and, uh, and the research around that. Um, Minister Elliott, one of the criticisms we hear from Ontario mm -hmm. health tech companies is the lack of market opportunities, as you alluded to, here at home. So um, these individuals will tell us that the majority of their customers are actually in the U.S., and uh, their hospitals view their products as um, investment. Uh, whereas here, Ontario um, or in Canada, they're perceived as a cost, so healthcare yeah. costs here, but makes money in the U.S. What can you do? You think can be done to incentivize our healthcare system to better utilize the innovation to improve patient care, while also removing procurement obstacles in our area? Well, we are taking a look at a transformation of the healthcare system, and I know it sounds a bit sci-fi, but, but really, we're looking at everything. There are no um, bad ideas out there. We are prepared to look at anything that's going to improve patient care, 
and to allow our innovators to be successful. I have heard from many people over the years, and not just during my time as health minister, but they've told me that it's embarrassing when they can't sell their own products in Ontario, that they go to other jurisdictions where they're wildly uh, successful and popular, and they can't get their own products off the ground in Ontario. That, that to me, is... Um, government's not doing their job for sure in that situation, and that's something that I look forward to working with my colleagues on and hearing more from all of you about what specific impediments there still are that, uh, that we can remove to allow you to be successful with your technologies and innovations that you're bringing forward because we need them. We absolutely need them. We need to move our province forward. We need to make sure that we provide that. I keep coming back to excellent quality patient care, but that's my job. And I need to be open and considering all of the issues that are um, impediments to that and seeing if we can clear those impediments so that you can be successful in all of your work. Mm -hmm. um, so really the final question that I have uh, in mind uh, has to do with um, a talk a topic that's been brought up a few times today mm -hmm. uh, at the summit, and it uh, relates to artificial intelligence. Yes. Does the government envision a role for AI in Ontario's uh, healthcare system? And if yes, what does the future look like uh, in your view? Oh, absolutely. We see a huge role for AI going forward. I've had some um, groups that have already come to speak with me about how it can be used, for example, in chronic disease management, how it can be used as a predictor for um, certain types of activities for seniors years perhaps uh, for falls for um, their um, inability to do certain activities how when's the appropriate time to come forward and deal with that AI can give us a lot of the answers there um, I know that a study has been done that six out of ten Ontarians are very excited about the prospect that AI has uh, to play in our healthcare system and as well as many other areas but in AI for example there are situations where um, physicians I know are looking forward to having AI I come forward and provide them with um, uh, appropriate medications for certain types of medical conditions where time is of the essence and you don't have time to try three or four or five medications until you finally get the right one. AI can make sure that once you know that person's genetic profile, you can know what kind of situation they're dealing with. You can automatically identify what the right chemotherapy or drug, whatever it's going to be that's going to be um, important to help provide that patient care. And I understand that many healthcare professionals are really excited about it too because there's so many changes. We're getting into a personalized healthcare now. We really need AI to help guide us in making sure that we can take the full advantage of that and make sure that we get the right medications to uh, people at the right time to save lives. At the end of the day, it's saving lives and making sure that people are healthy. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for um, engaging in this conversation. It's been a real honor for me, and I'm sure on behalf thank of the uh, audience, we'd like to thank you for your time. Uh, I know that our schedule has been changed a little bit, and I don't know. I'll hand it over to Nora. Okay.